Do you ever struggle combining colors together for your projects? With so many products out there on the market, new ones coming out, and some of them with an enormous amount of different shades like Distress Oxide Ink, no wonder it sometimes feels overwhelming to create, and although we get so excited to buy the new products, we might feel stuck not knowing how will they combine with the rest of the colors. And you start wondering if you need it, or is it just another color? Hi lovies, it's Karen here. In this video, I will help you learn five amazing color combinations with Distress Oxide inks that have always given me excellent results. In each combination, I will combine speckled egg with two other colors. I will break it down for you and explain why these combinations work so well together. And in that way, I will help you feel more confident when creating. And here is a little secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. I actually have six combinations. Stay tuned till the end as I'm going to do a flip through through all my combinations and there's even a bonus one right there at the end which is just gorgeous. So stay tuned. Combo number one to create a rusty patina effect. I really love the rusty patina look so I will combine speckled egg with vintage photo and rusty hinge. To create the background I start with my lightest color speckled egg and smoosh it onto my craft mat. Then I spray it with some water and press the paper onto the liquid ink. Then you dry this layer. Next use the rusty hinge and add it to the mat. Wet it and dip the paper into the orange color. Then repeat the step with the vintage photo by drying in between layers. You can continue adding layers of blue, orange, and brown until you're happy with the results. If you look at some rusty elements like furniture or something that has been outside for a long time, you will notice that the blue is always combined with some of the rusty orange that starts forming as the object is oxidizing with water or Air. This oxidation is what forms that patina color and since usually the objects are brown underneath that's why you get that amazing combination of brown, orange and blue like you see in these photos. Combo number two, mermaid tails. There's nothing more beautiful than combining purple with blue and in this case I love it with some pink as well. This combo is for the young soul at heart. This was my favorite combination as a kid. I always chose clothes to wear that were blue, purple, or pink. Sometimes a combination of all three. Let's face it, I'm a child of the 80s. It reminds me of mermaids, my little ponies, or even Cindy Lauper. Of course, as I grew up, my styles changed, but this is still one of my favorite color, co color combinations, especially in art. Whether it's two of the colors together or all three at once, the combination makes my soul sing. I will still add them in the same way as I did in my first combo, but you will notice that the results will be completely different. Remember that's important to follow the color wheel rules when combining colors, as some colors go well together and complement each other, while others don't and could turn your backgrounds into a muddy brown. If you don't mind the mud like Tim Holtz, then you're good to try. I really encourage you to experiment as that's the only way we learn. I won't be trying any reds today, for example. Although reds and blues can be combined into a purple, I prefer combining reds with more earthy tones like yellow, oranges, and brown. That's a preference, but you're welcome to try them as well. The reason why blue, pink, and purple go so well together is because we know that blue and red form a beautiful purple. So by using pink, which a lighter shade of red, you know that when you're going to combine those three colors together, they're still in the same family. If two primary colors combine well together to form a third one, you can definitely use all three of those together. I often see this combination during a sunset where you can see blue, pink, and purple, but I mainly see them with product design like you see here. Combo number three. The third combo reminds me of nature, as I think of nature when I think of these three colors together, blue, green, and yellow. I think of a beautiful blue sky or ocean with green trees and a shining sun. It's no wonder nature got it right. The combo is not only pleasing to the eye, but according to the color wheel, these colors go really well together. As I've learned in kindergarten that yellow and blue make green, we know that these colors will look beautiful together especially when all three are combined. 
I'm doing the same exact technique as the other combinations because what I'm really trying to focus is on color combinations that will really work well and help you create confidently. By mastering one technique, you will be able to create that technique perfectly and all you have to do is just find your favorite colors. Just remember that the stress oxide inks are not permanent because of the dye ink in them. So you need to seal them afterwards with either setting spray or with Tim Holtz Distress Microglaze. All these combinations will work no matter what technique you use. You can create an ombre or a rainbow effect as well as many other techniques. I have a video from a few years ago jam-packed with Distress Oxide ink techniques, which I will link at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Look how these colors look amazing in nature. Nature's got it right. Combo number four. This combo is more subtle and neutral. My friend Tiffany gave me the idea to combine speckled egg with gray and black. This reminds me of an urban landscape. If you think of an urban landscape with buildings in a really busy city, you mostly see gray buildings with blue sky. When urban planners design everything, they want to make sure that the city looks even and you don't end up with a red building sticking out like a sore thumb. So they do use a lot of gray and blues and black. And this combination, it's neutral, but it looks amazing. It's basically planned like you see here. The fifth combination is really cool as I wanted it to look like weathered wood. No wonder why Tim has a color called weathered wood, although it looks a little bit more like a gray. I did want to combine the speckled egg with an olive green and dark brown to make it look like driftwood or old weathered wood. I think this combination will be amazing. Imagine applying it through a stencil to create wood green patterns. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? Truthfully, you don't even have to look at a color wheel to figure out color combinations. Just look all around you, between nature that we know got it right in terms of colors, and cities, and people that are creating products. They know colors, and they put them together in a way that is pleasing to the eye. So all you have to do is look around you and see what type of products or what type of sceneries you love and that way you will be able to figure out some amazing combinations for your projects. Be inspired by what's around you, the way you see it here. Of course there are so many different types of combination with Distress Oxide inks because there's so many different Distress Oxide ink colors, 61 of them right now. If you don't have these exact combinations you can always use other colored inks that are similar or are in the same color spectrum. So for example if you don't have Vintage Photo you can use Walnut Stain. And remember that sixth combination I promised you? Look how I combined the speckled egg with different blues. It looked amazing. For more videos about Distress Oxide inks, you can follow these links. I have lots of techniques and ideas to help you get inspired and motivate you to create, to give you that confidence you need to use the Distress Oxide inks. Enjoy!